All right, so right now we are looking at the, this is gonna be the inspection cover for the left-hand side intake valve. A lot of people will ask me, what's the difference between the intake valve and the exhaust valve? The intake valve is over here by where the carburetors would be, and the exhaust valve is over by the exhaust pipe, because uh, the flow goes through the carburetors, through the engine, out the exhaust. So intake valve, exhaust valve. So we're gonna go ahead and take the inspection cover off. I'm gonna use my 17 millimeter. Let's see if we can get that off. Okay. Usually they kind of pop loose. Sometimes they're stuck because they haven't been taken off in a while. All right. So let's take a little bit closer look about what we have going on in here. When we are going to be adjusting the valves, and right now we're saying we're loosening the valves, what we're really doing is loosening this adjustment screw here that's at the end of the rocker arm. And that screw tip the very bottom here makes contact with the top of the valve stem. So valves is kind of a, a slang term. We're really adjusting the amount of slack in the system at the tip of the rocker arm. So we have our adjustment screw here, the top, and then we have a jam nut right here, which is a 10 millimeter. Uh, we showed you earlier the 10 millimeter offset box wrench and how it's a lot easier to get in here to adjust the valves with that. Let me show you why. So here's our, our regular 10 millimeter wrench and it kind of gets in here all right but when you're actually trying to make the adjustment sometimes the angle of the wrench is off um, the box wrench side kind of fits okay it's not great you'll see actually as we get the adjustment so here's our our offset box and it just fits in there a lot cleaner with less uh, interference so first thing I do is just break that lock nut loose all right and I'll just kind of unthread it a little bit you can see our valve adjuster in the middle is is starting to back up. I'm going to take our flathead screwdriver and just start to unscrew it well, a good bit. That's plenty right there. And now I can actually come inside there with my finger and see how tight it is. See that wiggling? Let me try to see if I can get my finger on the side over here. See that wiggling up and down? That means that rocker arm has a lot of slack in it and it's not going to interfere with the cam. So, Okay, uh, our next step is to determine what stroke the engine's on. We need to be just coming off the compression stroke for the left-hand cylinder here. The easiest way to do that is with the spark plug out. Um, I'm just gonna take my finger, put it over the spark plug hole, and turn the engine over with my wrench, and I'm gonna feel for compression. You can definitely feel it on your finger. Uh, you hear that? Yeah, so we're on the compression stroke right now. So that's good. If you don't feel the compression stroke, that means you know, turn the engine one full revolution and you'll be on the compression stroke. But that's a quick test to know where you are. All right, there's our LT mark. We'll make the valve adjustment. All right, so we've gone ahead and rotated our engine back to the LT mark on the compression stroke for the left-hand side. And what we're looking at right here is the left-hand exhaust um, tap it adjuster. Um, so a lot of people ask, what, why do I have to adjust the valves? I don't have to adjust the valves in my car. Why do I have to do it every 1,500 miles on my motorcycle? Well, the valve train in a motorcycle, or at least in this type of motorcycle, the 360, the 450, and the 350, are called a mechanical camshaft, meaning that they're all metal pieces rubbing on each other, and there's a certain amount of slack or lash that has to be in the system in order for it to operate properly. What happens is if you're too tight and you make all the adjustments too tight, you end up breaking parts because there's just not enough slack. Um, imagine your shoe. If you tighten up the laces too tight on it, you cut off the circulation to your foot and it makes it hard to walk and run. Uh, the opposite can happen. If it's too loose, it might fall off. So on the valves, if they're too loose, uh, they tend to make a lot of noise. And if they're really loose, you also can break stuff. However, between being too tight and too loose, I always recommend erroring on the looser side. And I'm actually going to show you an adjustment technique that errors on the looser side so that way um, it's easier to set the valves. Um, right now we have our, our, our lock nut backed up. We have actually our adjuster backed up and we're going to show you here how that guy kind of moves up and down. See how loose that is? Plenty of pl slack in that. And our adjustment for the exhaust side is three thousandths of an inch. It's not a whole lot. It's really, really, really fine adjustment. 
and on the intake side, it's 2000s. It's always a little bit tighter on the intake, and that's because the exhaust side runs hotter with the exhaust gas, and so the metal expands more, and so you always give the exhaust side a little bit more slack. Again, if you're not sure, err on the looser side. Um, what I'm going to use over here is I have a couple of the feeler gauges out of our uh, out of our uh, feeler gauge, and I have to take them out of the gauge so they're easier to work with. I have a three thousandths and actually a four thousandths over here, and uh, I'm going to do what I call an overshoot technique, where I'm going to adjust it to four thousandths. I call a tight four thousandths, which will be very close to a loose three thousandths. Again. I'd rather overshoot it a little bit than make it too tight. So we're actually going to zoom in here and uh, make the adjustment. Okay. Okay, so let's actually make the valve adjustment. The adjustment is going to be made between the end of the um, adjust the bolt here and the top of the valve stem. And I have my four thousandths feeler gauge, so we can see that. It's four. Again, I'm going to overshoot it a little bit from our three thousandths adjustment. I'm actually going to take the feeler gauge and I'm going to stick it right here in the engine. And you can see how it fits between the two, the top of the valve and the bottom of the rocker arm. And right now there's a lot of slack in the system. If I push down with the screwdriver, you can see that. Oh wow, it's a lot. So I got my feeler gauge in there. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my screwdriver, hopefully very cleanly. I'm gonna tighten up that adjuster until I just feel it start to make contact. Also, I'm gonna make sure that lock nut's backed up. Wait, all right. With a very gentle touch on the screwdriver, I'm feeling it touch the the uh, the feeler gauge, and actually it's kind of pinching, and I'm actually trying to pull it out right now. So that tells me I'm a hair tight. So I'm just going to loosen this up just a little bit until that gauge pulls out. All right, the reason it's called a feeler gauge is because we can't see you know where the actual the, the gap between the two pieces all we can do is feel they call the drag on it and actually as I'm pulling on this it's not it's got some resistance so that's kind of where I want the gauge to be uh, again the reason I, I'm using the four is because a, a tight four is going to be very close to a loose three so I'm pretty happy with that so I'm going to leave the gauge in there and I'm going to take my adjuster nut I'm going to bring it down until I feel it make contact that's pretty good now comes the fun part Here's where I use my offset box wrench and my screwdriver in tandem with each other. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to be tightening up that lock nut uh, in a clockwise fashion. And at the same time, I don't want to mess up my adjustment I just made on the actual adjuster. So I'm going to be turning counterclockwise or at least holding resistance on the screwdriver to keep the adjuster in position as I tighten this lock nut. So here I go. I'm turning that guy tight. Not too snug, that's plenty right there. Just snug. Again, I wanted to make sure that the adjuster here did not rotate as I'm tightening up the nut. All right, now it's time to check our work. That's a little bit snug there. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the four. And I'm gonna take my three, put my three in there and see how it feels. And I get my three in there pretty easily. That's probably pretty good. We'll go ahead and leave it there. So, with all that done, we have a little bit of play in here. We may not see it, but we might be able to hear it. You hear that? So again, I can't see it move, but I can feel it with my fingers move, and you can feel that tap. So, uh, that guy's adjusted. Um, now, this does take practice to do, so don't be discouraged if you don't get it right the first time. Um, it just takes kind of a trial and error. Again, error on the looser side than the tighter side. Um, a tight four is better than a, a tight three. So um, that one is set. We're gonna go ahead and go over to the intake side of the engine and do the adjustment over there. So we've moved over to the intake side of the engine and our intake uh, adjustment value is two thousandths of an inch. Again, not a whole lot. Uh, and I'm gonna overshoot that to a three thousandths of an inch. So I'm gonna use a three thousandths feeler gauge. Again, a tight three is gonna be like a loose two. So just like before, I'm gonna insert the feeler gauge between the tip of the valve and the tip of the rocker arm. And I'm going to bring the adjuster down until I feel it seat. I'm using a very, very light touch on the screwdriver just till I feel it touch right there. Okay, that's pretty tight. Back it up a hair. Okay, so I can I can move it, but there's some friction. 
that. That's probably good. All right. So, go ahead and bring my adjuster nut down. Or my lock nut down. And again, my goal is to tighten up the nut, but not let the adjuster move. So I'm tightening the nut clockwise, and I am putting counterclockwise force on the screwdriver to keep it from changing the adjustment. So if you get snug there, that's probably good. And you can see why, what, like the offset box wrench, box wrench now to get in here and make the adjustment. So we have clearance for the screwdriver, clearance for the feeler gauge. So it makes a world of difference in the adjustment. Okay, so let's take out our 3000 feeler gauge. We've got some friction on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert my 2000s. That's kind of a, a test. Get it in there. Feels pretty good, and I can feel a little bit of a jazz, a little bit of drag on it. It's not super tight, but it has some resistance. But the way to know if it's too tight or not is if you can actually feed the gauge in. It's pretty good. If you can't get the gauge in and out, it's too it's too tight. So gauge fits in there. Gauge comes out with a little bit of resistance. Good. And again, if I rock the rocket you can hear a little bit of slack in there and it's not very much I don't know if you guys can hear that or not anyway uh, the adjustments done for this side of the engine so I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees to the uh, T mark and we'll do the right hand side and we'll get this uh, this thing finished up okay so I'm just gonna check this now with the 2000 sphere gauge and Feels pretty good. A little bit of drag on it. All right, I'm happy with that. Okay, our last step is to put on our our valve cover here. Um, now these little covers are actually a pretty thin casting, so it's important not to over tighten them. So just put them down so you feel them seat by hand, and then just a little bit more with your wrench, not too tight. That's it. Um, they're really easy to crack. Um, I've done it before. If you need replacements, we have them available at CMC part number 4022. They're sold as a pair. Anyway, uh, that concludes the valve adjustment on the 360 engine. Uh, 350 and 450 have similar uh, techniques, but uh, we're going to see if we get the carburetors on this thing, ignition on, and get the thing to fire up later on today.